All right, the monarch butterfly migration, perhaps one of the coolest phenomena in nature. And this is compared to some really great stuff out there. So what we're talking about each year around late summer, early fall, the migration begins. We're talking about 200 million to 2 billion with a B butterflies flying down to Mexico to overwinter, spend the winter down in Mexico before coming back actually in the spring and early summer. Amazing stuff. So what happens is around late summer, early fall, they get cues from the environment like temperature, day length, the angle of the sun even, um, all sorts of things go into program to tell their brain to start their migratory path. Uh, it takes them a couple months depending on exactly where they originate. So we're talking about monarch butterflies all across pretty much every monarch butterfly east of the Rocky Mountains migrates down to Mexico each year. So some start in Maine, some start in Georgia, some start in Kansas, all over the place. So late summer, early fall, it takes them a couple months, flying about 200 miles a day, um, roughly at about 20 miles an hour. They're actually soaring in the clouds, above the clouds, through the clouds. They're usually resting at night, that has been documented. Um, but again, about two months to make their time down there. Uh, they arrive in Mexico, not coincidentally, right around November 1st, which is Day of the Dead. There's actually a lot of historical references and folklore of the monarch into the Day of the Dead festival. It's pretty cool, we can talk about that more. Um, they spend about four and a half months down in Mexico itself. So they usually arrive again early November and they stay till about mid-March. Um, while they're there, they're primarily resting. It's a quasi-hibernation, as we call it. Quasi-hibernation or a diapause in the insect world. Another word you might hear thrown out there is quiescence. This all just means kind of a hibernation, but not a true hibernation. They're still moving. They're eating a little bit. They're drinking a little bit more uh, water from the fresh mountain springs. And they are flying around. Not necessarily all of them each day, but they will take flight at midday in order to cool down, believe it or not. They're such efficient flyers that soaring in the cooler mountain air actually gets them to cool down. There is a risk because they're not eating much down there. If they get too warm, they won't be able to maintain the same fat reserves to power them back on their northward journey. Um, so again, around the beginning of March, they're going to turn on the reproductive systems again. That diverts all that energy back to reproduction. They're starting to mate and they're starting to think about flying north. So then about the second to third week of March, they're going to take off north. They're going to fly another thousand miles. Remember, they've flown about 3,000 miles to get down there. It's the same butterfly that flies another thousand miles back north laser eggs somewhere in and around southern Texas, kind of the southern states, right where milkweed begins to show up in abundance, lay their eggs, and then that gives rise to the next subsequent two to four generations. Now the crazy thing is, is this migratory generation, you know, I said this started in the late summer, early fall, it's the same butterfly. They live, believe it or not, about eight months. The rest of the generations live about two months. So one of the crazy mysteries is that the migratory generation lives four times as long just by turning on those migratory genes. It's absolutely amazing. So what happens is kind of this leapfrog dispersal system where monarch butterflies repopulate the rest of North America. They fly pretty much everywhere where their previous uh, ancestors were the previous year. Uh, they're going to Kansas, back to Ohio, up to Maine, to Southern Canada, all the way to that northern extent of milkweed, southern Canada. So, like I said, there are a couple crazy things. The first one I just mentioned is that migratory monarchs live four times as long. Absolutely sensational. Now, the even bigger crazy thing, um, the bigger mystery out there is the fact that it's the great-grandchildren or great-grand butterflies of the previous generation that actually make this migration. So this is really unique in the, uh, not just the insect world, but the animal world, because there are generations in between that do not migrate. Uh, if we think of birds, whales, wildebeest, all these migratory animals, they learn from their parents. They're imprinting, they're learning, they're being taught how to migrate and where to go. Butterflies, not only are they not being taught, there are generations in between. It's all genetic code up in their brain. It's simply, simply amazing. Uh, the monarch butterflies, what a great example of the more we know, the more questions we get to ask. Science and nature is pretty darn cool. Guys, if you enjoyed that, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, ask some questions. I'd love to create a discourse with my community out there. We'll see you next time.